Now in Good Morning Northwest, a barrage of missiles targeting Israel. Will it retaliate against Iran? And what would the White House do if it did? Less wind and better chances of showers coming in for this afternoon. Still breezy at times. The timing on all of this coming your way. And an invisible danger could be in your home. How to protect your family coming up. You're watching Good Morning Northwest on 4 News Now. We're glad you are starting your day with us. I'm Robin Nance. And I'm Natalie Grant. Today is Tuesday, April 16th. Let's get right on over to Mark Peterson here for a look at our forecast today. Mark, what, what can we expect? We can expect uh, increased cloud cover later on today. Now we do have some clouds out there, but we see really the band and then behind that it's going to be clear skies. We've cooled to 39, 37 into Coeur d'Alene continuing to cool for another hour or so and then we'll start warming back up again. Expecting to see again some nice breaks and some sunshine, but then we're going to see a little energy coming out of Canada. That's going to trigger some scattered showers. We'll see that at early as two or three o'clock and taking us through dinner time with spotty shower activity and some mountain snows expected with this system. We should be relatively dry, but again, a 20 to 30 percent chance of seeing that energy create some showers. So that's the reality. We look at what we can expect. The four things you need to know. It's going to be cooler and breezy today. A few showers still possible. It's going to be cold nights coming up this week. Overnight lows starting tomorrow morning at 32 degrees, but it's going to be sunny for Thursday and Friday. Our high today with some variable clouds and scattered isolated showers, 52 degrees. And now desk, new details from the Middle East following Iran's retaliatory attack on Israel this weekend. This morning, the U.S. and other world leaders are urging Israel to de-escalate the conflict. The White House saying if Israel decides to strike back against Iran, it will do so without the help of the U.S. military. Israel Defense Forces Chief of Staff issuing a warning, saying Iran will face consequences for its actions. Now, it's not clear what options Israel is considering, but the International Atomic Energy Agency has concerns about a possible strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. Now, this comes as the White House says Iran did not give the U.S. warnings about the time frame of its attack to limit potential damage. Iran's intent was clearly to cause significant destruction and casualties. The White House now urging Congress to pass the national security bill that would in part provide funding for Israel's defense as well as give money to Ukraine. That bill has been held up in the House by House Speaker Mike Johnson, who now says he wants to break up the single bill into separate votes. The White House is against that idea of breaking up the bill. And coming up in 30 minutes, I'll break down the latest deta details rather on House Speaker Mike Johnson's new plan for aid. Reporting in studio, Sydney Charles, 4 News Now. Sydney, thanks. Several people in Spokane participated in na a national protest for Gaza led by Strike for Gaza Coalition. And that is a national coalition made up of Palestinian and Muslim-led organizations calling for people to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Spokane's Party for Socialism and Liberation, or PSL, organized the protest locally, ending the strike yesterday in front of City Hall. And this isn't the first time. PSLs rallied in support of Palestine. It also rallied in October when the city council publicly supported Israel. Yesterday's protest had a similar goal, demanding city council members to pass a ceasefire resolution. Purpose of the strike is to do something concrete that brings pressure upon the system that lets people know that um, people are concerned about what's going on in Gaza, um, that the genocide is unacceptable, and that um, we're, we're tired of it. Uh, the people in Gaza are dying in tens of thousands. As for city council passing a ceasefire resolution, one council member told 4 News Now that won't happen. A bigger protest also took place in western Washington. Pro-Palestinian protesters blocked the road to arrivals and departures at the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport yesterday. People could be seen walking along the road to try and make their flights. In other news this morning, five Gonzaga students are dealing with a major mess due to a fire in their Logan neighborhood rental home. They found smoke building upstairs inside the walls. Crews cut out part of the roof to get ventilation, and that is when the flames and smoke began to billow. Firefighters say there was quite a bit of damage upstairs. They believe the cause may be electrical. In Moses Lake, Groff Elementary School is closed again today because of safety concerns with the electrical system. Students switched to remote learning yesterday. The school made Chromebooks and free meals available for those students. The district says precautionary repairs are expected to be finished today and the school then can reopen tomorrow. 
We'll take a look at your screen. This is the winning poster for this year's Northwest Radon Poster Contest done by a 10 year old named Lynn. It's an opportunity for kids to creatively raise awareness of the harmful effects of high indoor radon levels and promote testing and mitigation. Now high levels of radon are not a new problem here in the Inland Northwest. It's a colorless, odorless, uh, radioactive gas and it is the leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers. Researchers estimate nearly 3,000 lung cancer cases in the U.S. are linked to radon. Doctors and health departments say it's important to test for radon in your home. So the EPA recommends for sure mitigating to a level below four picocuries, um, but they suggest uh, below two. According to radon.org, the average indoor radon levels in Kootenai and Spokane counties are high above that threshold with the average in Spokane County at 7.3 picocuries. You can find radon detectors and do-it-yourself radon test kits at some hardware stores. And the CDC says radon can build up in the air in any home or building with the EPA recommending fixing your home if radon levels are above four picocuries per liter of air. A picocurie is a common unit of measuring the amount of radioactivity. Now take a look at this map from the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. The areas shaded in dark red are areas where more than 50% of radon tests came back at over 3.9 picocuries. So what can you do if you have high radon levels in your home? Well, the EPA recommends hiring a qualified company to install a radon detection system. Sealing cracks in floors and walls can then help prevent more radon from seeping into your home and increasing airflow can help temporarily reduce radon. Your Good Morning Northwest time is 6.07. Let's check back in with Mark. And yesterday, those winds were sure gusty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gust 37 miles an hour officially out at uh, Spokane International Airport, mm -hmm. helping some planes take off, apparently. <laughs> uh, we have and we will see still breezy conditions today, but uh, not quite what we had yesterday. The system continues to make its way out. It will calm down this afternoon a little bit more. A full check of your forecast is coming up. The city of Spokane wants to hear from you about your thoughts on public safety. I'm sharing how you can make an impact on local policies coming up on Good Morning Northwest. And federal authorities launched a criminal investigation into the ship that destroyed the bridge in Baltimore and killed six people. What exactly they're looking into? That's coming up. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Hi, welcome to Coeur d'Alene Honda. Thank you. I've been coming to Coeur d'Alene Honda for years, and they always treat me just like family here. Our customers love how easy it is to do business with us. We have Hondas that fit everyone's budget. Awarded Dealer of the Year and rated 4.7 on Google. All new Hondas and select pre-owned come with our nationwide lifetime warranty. Plus, all new Hondas come with two years free maintenance. Which Honda would you prefer? Coeur d'Alene Honda with the lifetime warranty at no additional cost to you or the other guys? Don't forget about our lifetime warranty. <coughs> Coeur d'Alene Denture Clinic is locally owned and operated and has been providing personalized, comfortable, and satisfying care to our clients for over 30 years. Our licensed denturists are trained in the latest techniques in the construction, development, and preparatory work of a denture. Full dentures, implant attachments, repairs, fittings, adjustments, we do it all. Every denture is made to look as close as possible to your natural teeth. With our knowledge and friendly staff, competitive costs, and quality of service, you'll leave Coeur d'Alene Denture Clinic smiling. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, drive to one of their six participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then drop off your bag at Debris where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Shred Day is Friday, April 19th. Pick up your shred and seal bag at one of their six locations while supplies last. We have a friend right now in one of the hospice houses. He said, the people are so happy here. And he said, I feel safe. We get to be with people at a very sacred moment. Yeah. The mission of Hospice of Spokane is to help people live as fully as they can during those dying days and weeks. To serve with a mission and learn how you can join the Hospice of Spokane team, visit hospiceofspokane.org. 
Our spring savings event is happening now at George Gee Kia Spokane. Shop 170 new Kias in stock with more arriving daily. Take advantage of spring savings and lease a new Kia EV6 light long range all wheel drive SUV for just $299 a month. Lease a new Kia Sportage Hybrid LX for just $399 a month. Visit the George Gee Kia team in Liberty Lake off I-90 or online anytime at SpokaneKia.com. Four News Now is brought to you by STCU, Best of Broadway. It is 610. Here's a look at what's new on Good Morning Northwest. In Baltimore, federal authorities have launched a criminal investigation into last month's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. On March 26, a cargo ship lost power and crashed into the bridge, destroying a large portion of the structure and killing six people. The ship's owner and manager have since filed a court document in an attempt to limit their financial liability. The FBI and the U.S. Coast Guard are, there, are leading the probe to determine whether the crew failed to report an earlier issue with the ship that delayed its departure. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer of the film Rust, has been sentenced to 18 months in prison. It's the maximum possible punishment. She was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter last month for the 2021 onset fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Actor and producer Alec Baldwin fired the gun that has also been charged uh, with involuntary manslaughter. He is expected to stay on trial in July. It's a Tuesday, the 10 second takeaway, pretty easy. It's gonna be cool and breezy today. We've got that underway, so get a light jacket before you hit that front door. You'll need your shades at times. We will see some nice sun breaks, 52 the high. For many anglers, the end of April means the opening of trout fishing season. However, one popular fishing spot just west of Spokane will close only two days after its opening day. Water access to West Medical Lake will close on April 29th as crews will begin to clean up debris left from last summer's gray fire. The main thing is, is safety for the public, uh, especially out here at, at West Medical Lake and Medical Lake. They're both very popular areas the you know the the public you know we want to keep them safe but here's some good news the closure will only last a few weeks it'll open back up again on may 10th osborne saying it gives them just enough time to make sure it can be the best before summer your good morning northwest time 6 12. help for wildfire preparedness coming up how spokane's mayor wants to use part of a proposed levy ahead of wildfires and during dangerous winter weather that's coming up Four News Now is brought to you by Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Livestream KXLY Plus on the Four News Now app. Man, I can take real good care of you. See, works perfectly for you, right? At Craig Swap and Associates, we don't get paid until you win. One call, that's all. 509-999-9999. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. Welcome to Moo Fitness. Let's go. Good morning. Thank you for calling Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. How may I help you today? I'm having some problems with my air conditioner. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What sort of problem? Well, it, it, it's making a clingity, clingity, clunk. <laughs> Sound. Oh, no worries. We can certainly take care of that for you. Here at Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, we speak your language. Considering selling your RV, R&R wants it. Tired of paying storage fees? R&R needs it. Just don't use it anymore? R&R will buy it. Due to a critical shortage of pre-owned RVs, R&R RV is currently paying our absolute top dollar for your used RV. Any year, any make, any model, turn your RV into cash or flip it for a newer model. So if you no longer use it or want it, let R&R RV buy it. Visit the R&R RV Superstore in Liberty Lake or call Keith at 509-499-2601. Nice work. You take cards? 
Can I get a check? Sure. Let me go find one. Thanks. Check behind the VCR. Can I be frank? You're cutting off potential clients by not offering card payments. That's like only watching one chain. That's fine. World War II channel. One type of music. Postmodern polka. One chain. Don't be a hater. Try our mobile card reader. Oh, good. You do take it. Welcome to the future. All right, let's power up. Nice. Two hands. Ten and two. STCU business. It's quarter after six. The city of Spokane wants your input on public safety. This month, you're invited to discuss current issues, concerns, and ways the police department can improve. Now, if you want to chime in, more opportunities are coming up. Allison Martinez is live in studio today to share how you can get involved. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. Since Mayor Lisa Brown has been in office, many changes have been made to the city's leadership. The national search for Spokane's next police chief is on. The city is hosting these community meetings to get your input for that decision. In addition to informing the search for a police chief, these meetings will help the city gauge what is and isn't working for public safety. Those who attend join small group discussions that help the city decide on future investments. We spend most of the time hearing from neighborhood uh, neighbors and residents about what's important to them. What are they seeing uh, in their communities? Where would they uh, like us to move? How can we create a community that is, is safe for everyone? Yates says in the meetings so far, community members have come ready to go with insightful feedback. She says this input has already had a direct effect on the city's decisions. The next public safety meeting is happening today at the Liberty Park Library. This meeting will run from 6 to 7 p.m. Then your last chance to chime in is next Tuesday, April 30th. That meeting will be virtual. Coming up in 30 minutes, I'll break down what the city is doing with this feedback and what will come next. Reporting in studio, Allison Martinez for News Now. Allison, thanks. Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown proposes a $192 million public safety levy aimed at filling a major budget gap. Now, one third of this levy will go towards community resilience. And this includes new developments for the city, like neighborhood resource officers, expanding the Office of Emergency Management, and emergency preparedness offices, which the city says would help people in need during a wildfire or even a cold snap. The city says it is still working out the details, but is looking at spaces that already exist that can be repurposed for this use. The city allocated a quarter million dollars for all heating, cooling, and smoke-related services, which have already been spent throughout its response to the cold snap. On top of that, the city's emergency management department is made up of just one person. These funds would take the office much further. We have people that aren't necessarily unhoused that need, um, you know, improved HVAC systems, places like that. Um, and we want to be able to have a place for them in their neighborhoods that are nearby so that they can go use those resources when they need to um, and then still be able to be close to their homes. And these hubs would likely rely on the passage of this public safety levy, which would cost the average homeowner about $323 a year. Here is a live look. This is between this is uh, between 29th and 30th on Perry. Traffic is down to one lane in each direction for a grind and overlay project. So if it's part of your commute, which it's part of mine, make sure that you give those construction workers a break and watch out for people in that area. Lots of cones, mm -hmm. as you can see, to avoid there. And I feel like this is pretty much an nearly every neighborhood right oh, yeah. now yeah. in the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area is. Cannot avoid it. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, traffic cones, the one thing that actually grows in the springtime around here. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning. Um, I have a confession to make. Do tell. Oh boy. Ladies, it's been four days since my last purchase of Girl Scout cones. <gasps> How are you doing? Well, I think four. it's about done, right? Yeah, I know, they it is getting there. I tell you, we got to get on the stick here. Um, 39 degrees and uh, we are going to see it's a cool start, but we're going to get colder tomorrow. Today, Oh, we're not going to get very warm either. 52 degrees, a normal high is about 57, so we're going to be below average. Breezy conditions calming down later on this afternoon. Tonight, yeah, freezing, 32 degrees. So we want you to be ready for that. Be prepared. Uh, we do see a clearing sky usually coming in with a little bit of cooling. And then we're going to have these spotty scattered showers coming out of Canada, hitting a little warmer air, and we're going to have 
the potential for a few scattered showers. Now, part of the issue is as the cold front that arrived last night moves out, we still have some gusty winds to contend with. We're at 16, but gust to 25 into the Palouse. So you're getting ready to head off to a class or work. Make sure that you're dressed appropriately. We look at the forecast radar, and it really does come down to this energy coming out and through our area. So it's going to be spotty and scattered shower potential get a bit of a break and then we're going to have another round in the morning hours mainly into the mountains but something just to you know know that it's possible and likely in many areas 52 our high today 47 into Kellogg 57 into Grand Coulee and into the Tri-Cities they're going to be at 60 degrees not looking too bad planning forecast we are planning on warmer weather coming in it's going to be really for Wednesday 54 we're going to have temperatures in the mid 50s Thursday Friday sunshine gorgeous but with that clear sky, that colder air comes in, and we are going to see uh, Saturday and Sunday at about 60 degrees and mid-60s for Monday. Mm. Who knew you'd look forward to a Monday? Yes. Oh, well, there you have it. That'll be so, it. so nice. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cones, we're going to talk more about this, I'm sure, but free ice cream cone, free cone day. It is at today. Ben and Jerry's. All Ben and Jerry's. You can Ooh. get it scooped by Robin Nance. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is now 621. <laughs> Eastern Washington University has found its new head basketball coach in Dan Monson. The former Long Beach State coach had one of the wildest stories in the NCAA tournament last season, but has his sights set on building a legacy in the place he once called home. We'll tell you more after the break next in Morning Sports. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Sate Bistro Coeur d'Alene's culinary extravaganza of American fusion dining. From our extensive wine cellar to our unforgettably decadent menu, we'll move your experience beyond ordinary to the extraordinary. Sate Bistro, just off the 4th Street exit in Coeur d'Alene. My name is Bob Rambo, and this is my Summit Cancer Center story. I had lymphoma. I was kind of scared to death, and the doctors recommended I go to Summit Cancer Center. Everybody on the staff there is super neat, nice, and it's kind of like a, a homecoming. I had lymphoma, and they cured that. I am very thankful for this cancer center. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. Choosing countertops is one of the biggest decisions that you make during a kitchen remodel, and my husband and I thought that we would have to go to Seattle to find what we wanted. A friend recommended that we try Granite Concepts in Lewiston, and the people at Granite Concepts were amazing. They were friendly and straightforward and helped us find exactly the countertops that we wanted. Granite Concepts. Beauty set in stone. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, drive to one of their six participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then drop off your bag of debris where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Shred Day is Friday, April 19th. Pick up your shred and seal bag at one of their six locations while supplies last. Sate Bistro, Coeur d'Alene's culinary extravaganza of American fusion dining. From our extensive wine cellar to our unforgettably decadent menu, we'll move your experience beyond ordinary to the extraordinary. Sate Bistro, just off the 4th Street exit in Coeur d'Alene. After 25 years of familiar faces officially back in the Inland Northwest and leading the Eastern Washington men's basketball team on Monday afternoon, Dan Monson was introduced as the 20th head coach in program history and he made it known in his opening statement, this is not a stepping stone job and he wants to build a legacy in Cheney. Of course, everyone knows he was the coach of Gonzaga 25 years ago and took them to the Elite Eight, but the roots go even deeper from there. He was born in Spokane and lived in Cheney for some years.
as his father Don was coach at Cheney High School before he eventually led the Idaho Vandals to the Sweet 16 in 1982. However, this moment ironically wouldn't have happened if Long Beach State decided to renew Monson's contract a month ago. And what happened after that? Well, the team made it all the way to the NCAA tournament. So as you can understand, this last month has been a roller coaster of emotions for him. I, I think the whole thing, the full circle is very, I don't know, spiritual or uh, it's, it seems like somebody above me is, 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 is giving me a, a, a real blessing and a real um, purpose at, at my age and, and maybe too much of a purpose. There's a lot going on here, but, but this last month is really, I wouldn't trade it for anything, for any job in the world, uh, the, the emotions, the, the amount of support I've had from my family and my friends. You know, to know get, having those relationships is way more important than where I, where I coach or, or what team I have. And a pair of Gonzaga Bulldogs are headed off to the W this summer. In Monday night's WNBA draft, guard Brenna Maxwell was selected 13th overall by the Chicago Sky. After spending two seasons in Spokane, she earned back-to-back uh, -back first team all WCC honors and averaged almost 14 points a game. And teammate Kaylin Trung was taken a few picks later at 21st overall by the Washington Mystics. Uh, Trung spent five seasons with Gonzaga, but it was her 2022-2020 23 campaign where she became a breakout star being named WCC player of the year and an All-American. Now both Maxwell and Trong will get their professional careers started in less than three weeks as the Sky and Mystics both open up their seasons on May the 4th. Reporting in studio, I'm Alex Crescenti for News Now Sports. A uh, huge congratulations to both of them. Absolutely. So exciting. It's now 626. This week, the U.S. House is set to vote on several bills, including one that could ban TikTok. Sydney Charles has all those details. Coming up next. And Idaho's ban on gender-affirming care temporarily reinstated by the U.S. Supreme Court. After the break, what this now means for transgender youth in the state. And as we send you off to a commercial break, here's your first look at what's coming up on Good Morning America at 7. In this morning's GMA First Look, a parent just trying to make his kid happy. We're going to build an octopus tank. Thank you so much. Cameron Clifford from Edmond, Oklahoma, surprising his nine-year-old son Cal with a mail-order California two-spot octopus, a creature Cal has always been fascinated by. I've just loved him since I was two because they're the closest things to aliens and they're just so cool. But they quickly learned having an octopus as a pet was a lot harder than it seemed. We kind of estimated there were about between 40 and 70 eggs, but every one that hatched that I saw, I was able to catch and contain, and, I, and it was exactly 50. So what's next for the Octo Mom and her family, both aquatic and human? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. I have moderate to severe Crohn's disease. Now, there's Sky Rizzy. Things are looking up. I've got symptom relief. Control of my Crohn's means everything to me. Significant symptom relief at four weeks with SkyRizzy, including less abdominal pain and fewer bowel movements. SkyRizzy is the first IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver remission and visibly improve damage of the intestinal lining. And the majority of people experienced long-lasting remission at one year. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Now's the time to ask your gastroenterologist how you can take control of your Crohn's with SkyRizzy. Control is everything to me. Oh. Learn how AppV could help you save. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by River City Glass. My daughter is Andrea, and I'm showing up in her life because I show up in mine. Forgiveness is, you know, she trusts me, and I forgive myself for choosing drugs. I've been in long-term recovery since 2519. The Native Treatment Center gave me that spiritual connection to where I can have a healthy life and recover. Other people show me forgiveness by supporting me for who I am. 
One word can change the story. My treatment story starts with forgiveness. Our spring savings event is happening now at George Gee Kia Spokane. Shop 170 new Kias in stock with more arriving daily. Take advantage of spring savings and lease a new Kia EV6 light long range all wheel drive SUV for just $299 a month. Lease a new Kia Sportage Hybrid LX for just $399 a month. Visit the George Gee Kia team in Liberty Lake off I-90 or online anytime at SpokaneKia.com. Prosser Digestive Health Center is now offering gastroenterology services daily, including weekends. Board-certified gastroenterologist Dr. Jack Brandeber provides the full spectrum of digestive health care. His services include colon cancer screenings, treatment for swallowing problems, inflammatory bowel disease, liver disorders, and more. To schedule an appointment, call Prosser Digestive Health Center at 509-786-5599 or learn more at prosserhealth.org. This is how we care. From 4 News Now, this is Good Morning Northwest. The 4 News Now story tracker starts with the stories people are reading about online this morning. Tax day has come and gone, but if you are affected by the Gray and Oregon Road fires, you have until June 17th to file. Wildfire survivors also have until the 20th of April, that's this Saturday, to apply for FEMA assistance. Now, FEMA encourages anyone wanting to apply to visit the disaster recovery centers that are open in both Medical Lake and Elk. Today is Ben and Jerry's free cone day. I will be scooping at River Park Square along with our old morning show partner, Derek Dice, at the River Park Square location from noon until one. You can go to any Ben and Jerry's location though today from noon till eight tonight to get a free ice cream cone. And then while you're there, donate because all those donations benefit the nonprofit Cancer can't. Such a good deal. Yeah. To see you guys get a free cone for mm -hmm. a good cause. Well, thanks so much for starting your day with us. I'm Natalie Grant. And I'm Robin Nance. It's Tuesday, April 16th. Let's check in with Mark now and our first alert forecast to get you rolling. All right, good morning. So we do have a cloud bank that's moving over the South Hill right now, and we've got some blue sky behind that. We're going to see some radiational cooling, but then it's going to come back up. Right now we're sitting at 31 or 39 degrees, but look at the wind still to 16 miles an hour. And those winds are going to be with us throughout the morning hours, starting to die down this afternoon as that cold front continues to make its way out. So cooler and breezy today. A few showers still possible this afternoon. Cold nights this week. We're going to talk about that. And of course, sunny Thursday and Friday. Looking forward to that. We have in our forecast radar again, variable clouds. This afternoon, we start to see more of that energy come out of the north. That's going to trigger scattered showers all over the region. Nothing real organized tomorrow morning. See that last band and then potentially just then mountain showers. Things do dry out and we see more sunshine towards the end of the week. 40 currently in downtown. It's 30 in Deer Park, 33 in Dicini with those gusty winds makes it feel like it's down to 20 degrees which means you want to dress appropriately. Our high today is going to be a below average 52 degrees. And new from the breaking now desk this morning we're learning more about several bills up for a house vote this week. That includes a new bill to ban the popular social media app TikTok. Now this one is different than the one the chamber passed with strong bipartisan support. This time the ban is tucked into a set of four separate bills. Speaker Mike Johnson predicts the house will vote Friday night on the separate bills. Three have aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. While sources say the fourth includes a ban on TikTok. That has some of the things with regard to the uh, loan lease uh, option and the, uh, the Repo Act and, and some other sanctions on Iran and, and other measures that we've been talking about here for quite some time. The House has the ability to combine the four bills after greenlighting them separately. The Senate has yet to take up a different TikTok bill than the one passed in the House last month. That bill would ban the platform from U.S. app stores unless it's spun off from its Chinese parent company. Supporters of that measure say TikTok is a national security risk. The new House bills could hold some appeal for Democrats who have been trying to pass foreign aid for months. But the White House prefers a Senate package that does not ban TikTok. And the White House is also against the idea of breaking up the aid bill, but also saying they want the funding approved quickly. Reporting in studio, Sydney Charles, 4 News Now. 
Sydney, thanks. The U.S. Supreme Court is allowing Idaho to temporarily enforce its ban on gender-affirming care for transgender youth. The Supreme Court ruled the law, which makes it illegal for doctors to provide gender transition care to minors, can now go into effect, but cannot be applied to the two plaintiffs who are suing the state. Two tra transgender girls say the law is unconstitutional. In December, a lower court ruled Idaho couldn't enforce the law while the case worked its way through the court system. The Supreme Court said that court's decision was too broad and sent it back to the district court. Idaho Attorney General Raul Labrador applauded that decision. Now, these 23 states have passed similar laws, most of which are being challenged in court. A federal judge recently struck down Arkansas's ban, calling it unconstitutional. Gender-affirming care for youth is supported by every major medical organization, including the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American Psychiatric Association. We now know the name of the woman who died in a crash on Argonne Road Friday. Here's a photo of that crash. The Spokane County Medical Examiner says 28-year-old Amanda Fuller was driving south on Argonne Road when she crossed the center line and hit a pickup truck head-on. The Sheriff's Office says Fuller was pronounced dead at the scene. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office said the man driving the truck was taken to the hospital with severe but non-life-threatening injuries. A repeat offender arrested for indecent exposure in Spokane Valley is appearing in court today. Julian Cuthbert was arrested on April 4th in front of a hardware store on East Sprague. Deputies say a motorist called in a man touching himself inappropriately at the bus stop. The responding deputy learned Cuthbert had been convicted of similar charges in the past. He has 41 prior adult convictions and has failed to appear in court 23 times. A judge set his bond at $5,000. He'll be appearing in court later this morning. Nationwide Americans are losing $6 billion a year to cryptocurrency scams, and the Inland Northwest has already seen several victims fall prey to them. Detective Tim Schwering of the Spokane Police Department's Criminal Intelligence Unit spends a lot of time doing presentations to help you spot these scams and avoid becoming the next victim. These scams often start as a text message or an email from a stranger just looking for a response. After building a relationship over time, the scammers ask you to send them cryptocurrency. Detective Schwering says one woman in Spokane lost her entire life savings through a crypto scam. She had, you know, well over $350,000 and that's all gone. But we have cases again, $250,000, $500,000, people losing their life savings to these types of scams. We will tell you why police cannot help you get your money back if you it's send cryptocurrency and the red flags you should watch for. So and Derek Dice's special report tonight on 4 News Now at 6 o'clock. Well, good morning, Northwest time is 637. Mark is back and we we're talking about all those wins we had yesterday really strong. Yep, and they're, they're starting to get lower, but we still have breezy conditions, 16 miles an hour for us. We've got gust 25 into the Palouse, so Again, they're going to be with us here another couple of hours. We do see, again, a little bit of clearing out there. Variable clouds, chance showers. Your forecast coming up. Problems with the new FAFSA are continuing to grow. How this failed rollout is further highlighting Washington's FAFSA failures when we come back. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. So here at Hayden Lake Physical Therapy and Aquatics, we offer a wide range of physical therapy services, all the way from treating young athletes, all the way up to seniors who have a hard time standing or walking and everything in between. Currently, Hayden Lake Physical Therapy is building its third location in Post Falls on Highway 41. The clinic is an 8,800 square foot building, just like this one on Prairie Avenue. It does have an aquatic therapy pool, and it is scheduled to be open in May of 2024. It's been 20 years since Toyota launched the world's first mass-produced hybrid vehicle, the Toyota Prius. And today, Parker Toyota's inventory is filled with hybrids like the RAV4, Highlander, and Tundra. Plus, the all-new Grand Highlander and Tacoma. Whether you're heading up the mountain or hauling kids around town, Parker Toyota's selection of hybrids are designed to move you quicker and travel further with fewer trips to the pump. See our huge selection of hybrids built for the everyday driver at Parker Toyota in Coeur d'Alene or visit parkertoyota.com. Fairway Floor Abbey Carpet in Post Falls has been North Idaho's premier flooring shop for over 30 years. From remodels to new construction, they've got your home or business covered from wall to wall. Their expert design team will work with you to find the perfect floor for your lifestyle and budget. They've got the lowest prices. From carpet and area rugs to hardwood, LVP and laminate, if you can dream it, they can floor it. Dream it. Design it. Live it. 
at Fairway Floor Abbey Carpet in Post Falls. We're starting a movement. Well, technically a don't movement. Because we work hard and want to relax harder. It's the Lazy Boy Best Comfort on Earth sale. Save 25% on everything. Lazy Boy. Long live the lazy. Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1 1.9% financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. A random text message hiding a sinister motive, and anyone can be a target. A woman lost her entire life savings. I'm Derek Dice. I'll tell you how to spot the scammers before it's too late and the number one mistake they're counting on you to make. Tonight on 4 News Now at 6. It is now 640. The Biden administration's new updated FAFSA form may now only take 20 minutes to fill out. But thanks to technical glitches and issues, it's taking months for students to hear back on their financial aid packages. Issues with FAFSA highlight some of the long-standing issues students in Washington face when dealing with higher education, especially for first-generation students. Washington ranked 47th for FAFSA completion last year, despite ranking in the top five states in 2021 to 2022 school year for the amount of need-based aid offered to full-time students. According to the FAFSA tracker, as of March 29th, 22% of Washington seniors and 23% of Idaho seniors have completed this year's form. Some of the reasons why students aren't filling out this form include fear over sharing their parents' tax information, fear of going into debt, and language barriers. To see what the Moses Lake School District is doing to help overcome these barriers, you can head to our website, kxly.com. It's Tuesday, 10 second takeaway on your screen. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna be breezy. Check, check. Uh, you'll need a light jacket as you head out, but the shades at times, the sun will peep out. 52 degrees for our high today. A Moorhead, Minnesota woman says her dog saved her from a possible deadly situation. Lisa Boat says her dog Tuesday gave her an early morning wake up, which is rare for the late rising pup. She says Tuesday led her to the kitchen where she realized that Tuesday was waking her up because of a gas leak. Bode called firefighters who responded and aired out the home. Now she is thinking of special treats for her hero. All the treats, and I'm just sitting here wondering, would Winnie alert me to a gas leak? Would she pick <laughs> up on that? Of course she would. She's brilliant. In her own way. <laughs> It's now 642. The city of Spokane is asking for your help to make the city safer. Allison Martinez is live in studio with how you can get involved. Your input is needed before big decisions are made, like who will be our next police chief. I have all the details you need coming up. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 38 specials, timeless Southern Rock hits, live at Coeur d'Alene Casino, Thursday, April 18th. Get your tickets now for one of rock and roll's biggest all-time bands. is just the beginning. With Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, you can pick up the tab even when you forget your wallet. I got this. Fargo, send Cas $145 to the sale. Smooth. Want faster, easier banking? You can with Wells Fargo. What else can Fargo do? Oh, come on, come on. Fargo lets you do this. Fargo, turn off my debit card. I found it. I found my card. And also this. Fargo, turn on my debit card. Do you, Fargo? You can with Wells Fargo. With local utility rebates and massive tax credits available, it's now possible to upgrade to a heat pump for less than a traditional air conditioner. Heat pumps are far more efficient than air conditioners when it comes to heating and cooling your home. Get year-round comfort with higher efficiency, all while lowering your monthly utility bills. So don't be fooled into buying outdated air conditioning technology. Upgrade to a heat pump. The smart choice for smart homeowners. Call Bills Heating and AC today for your free estimate. I felt like there was just no answers to get out of the anxiety and the depression that I had. I was suicidal all the time, thinking about it nonstop, every day, every moment. Depression and anxiety rob millions of us of our day-to-day -day lives, but nothing seems to pull you out of it. Introducing NeuroStim TMS, Washington's leading provider of transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS therapy. At NeuroStim TMS, we treat the root of the problem with a series of short daily treatments. Using a non-invasive magnetic field, 
TMS activates the natural function of the brain's neurotransmitters to improve mood and regulate emotion. TMS is not shock therapy. It's an FDA-approved, easy outpatient experience and covered by all major medical insurances. There's nothing better than just being able to enjoy life again. The treatment just completely, fundamentally changed my life. Visit NeurostemTMS.com today or call to schedule your free consultation at any of our 12 Washington State locations. Damn straight. Scotty McCreary is spreading his fresh take throwback country to Coeur d'Alene Casino Thursday, May 2nd. Get your tickets now for one of country music's biggest stars. The winning is just the beginning. Four News Now is brought to you by Finley Downtown Toyota. Welcome back. The time is now 645. Your feedback is needed to make Spokane a safer and healthier place. This month, the city of Spokane invites the community to discuss current issues, concerns, and the ways the police department can improve. And if you want to chime in, more opportunities are coming. 4 News Now's Allison Martinez is in studio sharing how you can get involved. And what will be done with your feedback? Allison? The national search for Spokane's next police chief is on. The city of Spokane is hosting community meetings to share what the hiring process looks like and to learn the qualities you'd like in a leader. In addition to informing the search for a police chief, these meetings will help the city gauge what is and isn't working for public safety. Those who attend join small group discussions to help inform decisions to come. Here you can share concerns, ideas, and your personal experiences. These meetings have been really welcoming. Uh, I've been really heartened by the collaborative nature, uh, how community members have and neighbors have listened to each other, learned from one another. The conversations have been incredibly profound and there have been some uh, really moving stories, personal stories that people have shared. Once the city gets the feedback, they will take it to the consulting company hired to do interviews for the next police chief. That feedback will also be shared with the selection committee, which is made up of both city leaders and community members. The next public safety meeting is happening today at the Liberty Park Library. This meeting will run from 6 to 7 p.m. Then your last chance to chime in is next Tuesday, April 30th. That meeting will be virtual. The city has also released a public safety survey. For more information on how you can get your voice heard, you can head to our website, kxly.com. Reporting in studio, Allison Martinez, 4 News Now. Allison, thanks so much. We want to show you another site. You see this all over the place, don't you? All those uh, barriers up. This is a live mm -hmm. look at Boone in Washington, right down the road from the 4 News Now studios. The intersection is closed for a grind and overlay project. So you can use Division or Monroe to travel north or south and Maxwell Avenue for some east-west traffic. But yeah, definitely lots of construction everywhere you look around all here. All over. So yeah, you know the drill. Give yourself some time. Mm -hmm. Take it slow in those work zones. First world mm -hmm. problems. I have to go on like five different turns to get to my coffee stand it you know oh my after God. I get uh, priorities you know, <laughs> know. really <laughs> it's gonna be great when it's finished though of course um, here is a great look at some of the areas around us first of all Moscow you look absolutely beautiful looking downtown on Washington Street US 90 or 95 uh, and then we see the throws of shadows as we do have some fairly clear skies out there. Uh, we're sitting at 39 degrees. Look at Deer Park now chilled to 30. It's 34 in Duchini, and those gusty winds make it feel like it's into the very low 20s. So make sure those kids have some layers on. 36 into Post Falls. Hayden, you're at 37 degrees. We look at what we can expect today. 52 degrees, going to be increased clouds. We're going to have scattered afternoon showers. Some still breezy conditions out of the west. Tonight, temperatures down to 32. That's freezing. Yes, I know you know that. But it's going to continue to be the trend for the morning hours for the next several days. We look at what's going on around the country. Severe weather is going to continue to fire up into the central and northern plains. Today. That's where all eyes are on the tornadic potential. And then we've got a system that's coming in and, well, we're going to be living that. We see these winds now gust to 25 into the Palouse as that system continues. That cold front works its way through Montana and we have winds to 16 miles an hour. So here's a look at the uh, the radar, the forecast radar, and we see the potential for some energy coming out of the clouds about 4.30 this afternoon. You know, it could start as early as two that we could see some isolated showers into the Selkirks, North Idaho, but we're right on the southern edge of that, and then we're gonna see it continue to make its way out 
but it'll swing back and give us one last little bump on Wednesday. So we still have that isolated chance, 10 to 20% chance Wednesday. 52 today, 54 into Ritzville into the Tri-Cities. You guys looking pretty good. You're going to have some cloud cover, but 60 degrees. We won't get to 60 until Saturday, but wrapping up this week, we're going to be in the mid-50s, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's the overnight lows that will be impactful as we'll have temperatures down to freezing. So, yeah, chilly if you're walking to school, waiting on a bus. Yeah. Could even see a little frost in some areas. Yeah. Uh, but then we warm up. Next Monday, 64 degrees. Nice. That'll be really nice. A reminder to not pull your plants out quite yet. Not yet. A lot of temptation yet. is there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is now just about 10 minutes before the hour. Your morning sprint is coming right up. Thanks so much for waking up with us here on Good Morning Northwest to kick off your Tuesday. We'll be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by PAR, your total home building source. Kylie and I know there's a lot of great choices for new and pre-owned cars in North Idaho. And we want Parker Subaru to be your first choice. Not only do we have a great selection of Subarus, we have an award-winning service center, now open seven days a week. Because we are committed to keeping you satisfied long after the purchase. Visit us online at parkersubaru.com or stop by and visit us at Parker Subaru in beautiful Coeur d'Alene. Mr. Clock Casino Hotel is now open. Stay with us, relax and rejuvenate while taking advantage of our amazing amenities, including a restaurant and lounge open to the public daily starting at 3 p.m. Want to sell fast? Go to webuyhouses.com. We'll buy any house in any condition. Get your no-obligation cash offer today. Call webuyhouses.com at 509-563-7575. No slam dunk today, it looks like. Oh, don't worry. I can fix this. At Craig Swap & Associates, we want to make sure that you're really winning. We get you compensated fairly, and we don't receive a penny until you get paid. How do I contact you guys? One call, that's all. 509-999-9999. For Valerie, I accept her the way she comes. She loves affirmations. <laughs> but she also knows how to pull somebody out of a funk when you need it. I absolutely accept her for who she is. We're both in recovery. Just having that person to be able to walk alongside you, going through what you're going through, we all have value. And learning to accept is healing. One word can change a story. For us, recovery starts with acceptance. When your backyard is bursting with color and beauty, you're feeling more than pride. You've got the power of the flower from the plant farm. The power of the flower gives you creativity, inspiration, energy, and so much more. With the helping hand of the plant farm, life excites and your talent knows no boundaries. Bring home the power of the flower from the plant farm today. Because life is better in the garden. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. It is now 6.53. Time to get you ready to take on the Tuesday and the morning sprint. City Charles has the latest details on a conflict in the Middle East following a weekend drone attack. The City of Spokane wants your input on public safety. Allison Martinez sharing how you can get involved. We're experiencing wind and potential showers today. Mark has your forecast just ahead. But we begin with the latest details on the criminal trial of former President Donald Trump. Jury selection resumes today. Trump will return to the courtroom where lawyers are vetting the pool of New Yorkers to find 12 jurors and six alternates to hear the case. The former president is charged with falsifying business records to conceal stories about his sex life from voters before the 2016 election. Coverage of the historic trial will continue on Good Morning America. A repeat offender arrested for indecent exposure in Spokane Valley is appearing in court today. Julian Cuthbert was arrested April 4th in front of a hardware store on East Sprague. Deputies say a motorist called in a man touching himself inappropriately at the bus stop. 
Now, while responding, deputies learned Cuthbert had been convicted of similar charges in the past. He has 41 prior adult convictions and failed to appear in court 23 times. He'll appear in court later this morning. But we now know the name of the woman who died in a crash on Argonne Road Friday. Here is a picture of that crash. The Spokane County Medical Examiner says 28-year-old Amanda Fuller was driving south on Argonne Road when she crossed the center line and hit a pickup truck head-on. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says Fuller was pronounced dead at the scene. The man driving the truck was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. All right, good morning, everybody. In our first alert weather, uh, breezy conditions, not as windy as it was yesterday, certainly, but we're going to continue to see clouds on the move and afternoon showers that are going to be popping here and there. It's a 20 to 30 percent chance, and that's going to continue through tonight. So we're still trying to get this energy out of here. We're going to have temperatures today that are going to go from, well, 39 right now to a high today of 52 degrees. This morning, the U.S. and other world leaders are urging Israel to de-escalate the conflict in the Middle East. Israel is vowing to respond after Iran launched an attack involving drones and missiles. The White House saying if Israel decides to strike back against Iran, it will do so without the help of the U.S. military. Now, it's not clear how Israel will respond just yet, but the International Atomic Energy Agency has concerns about a possible strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. People in Spokane participated in a national protest for Gaza led by Strike for Gaza Coalition. That's a national group made up of Palestinian and Muslim-led organizations calling for people to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Spokane's Party for Socialism and Liberation, or PSL, organized the protest locally, ending the strike yesterday in front of City Hall. The goal of yesterday's protest, demanding city council members pass a ceasefire resolution. One council member tells 4 News Now, that will not happen. A bigger protest also took place in western Washington. Pro-Palestinian protesters blocked the road to arrivals and departures at the Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. People could be seen walking along the side of the road to try and make their flights. Your feedback is needed to make Spokane a safer place. This month, the city of Spokane invites the community to discuss current issues, concerns, and ways the police department can improve. These meetings are held to gather input and in what residents want in the next police chief. They also will help the city gauge what is and isn't working for public safety. Those who attend join small group discussions to help the city decide on future investments. The next meeting is today at the Liberty Park Library from 6 to 7 p.m. The Supreme Court is allowing Idaho to temporarily enforce its ban on gender-affirming care for transgender youth. The Supreme Court ruled the law, which makes it illegal for doctors to provide gender transition care to minors, can now go into effect but cannot be applied to the two plaintiffs who are suing the state. In December, a lower court ruled Idaho could not enforce the law while the case worked its way through the court system. In Moses Lake, Groff Elementary School is closed again today because of safety concerns with the electrical system. Students switched to remote learning yesterday. The school made Chromebooks and some free meals available for students. The school is expected to reopen again tomorrow. And take a look at your screen. This is the winning poster in this year's Northwest Radon Poster Contest done by a 10-year-old named Lynn. It's an opportunity for kids to creatively raise awareness of the harmful effects of high indoor radon levels and promote testing and mitigation. Radon is a colorless, odorless, radioactive gas. It is the leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers. Doctors and health departments say it's important to test for radon in your home. You can find more information by going to your local hardware store. Back with weather. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. Roundups like an accidental savings account. I get paid every time I buy something. It's like a bonus for me.
Time to grab the broom and sweep out the old. It's spring cleaning time at Wendell Ford. Help us say goodbye to all the remaining 2023 Fords and hello to this year's best deals. The 23 F-150, 1.9% financing for 72 months. The 23 Mach-E, 0% financing for 72 months. The 23 Ford Escape, plug-in hybrid, 0% financing for 66 months. Hurry in today for these spring cleaning deals before they're swept away. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. A random text message hiding a sinister motive, and anyone can be a target. A woman lost her entire life savings. I'm Derek Dice. I'll tell you how to spot the scammers before it's too late and the number one mistake they're counting on you to make tonight on 4 News Now at 6. As we take a live look out there, you can see the clouds, a little bit of blue sky. We're going to see things uh, warm up today, but not as warm as yesterday. Okay, we're going to continue to have this as the coolest day of the week. 52 degrees will be the high today with scattered and spotty showers this afternoon. Tomorrow, 54, partly cloudy, and then the sun comes out Thursday and Friday with highs into the mid 50s. The issue is that the cold evenings, we're going to start our day um, at very cold. We're going to be freezing. Things do warm up for the weekend, and we'll have highs of around 60 for Saturday and Sunday. Thanks so much for starting your day with us right here on Good Morning Northwest. We hope you can stick around throughout Good Morning America. We'll have live local updates. GMA starts now.